guys, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I put together my No Fuss Thanksgiving tablescape. When it comes to holiday entertaining, guys, things don't have to be complicated. So this table was so easy to put together. I'm going to show you how I did it and give you some tips along the way. And then I'm also going to be sharing with you how to make this delicious apple cider cocktail. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video for that recipe. This video is also a collab with my friend Bella from Bella D Designs. Bella's also going to be showing you her Thanksgiving tablescape and another drink recipe. I'm going to leave a link for Bella's channel in the description box below. So when you're done watching my video, go check out her tablescape and her drink recipe because I know Bella and they're both going to be great. I love watching Bella's videos because she's such a ray of sunshine. She makes me smile every time I watch one of her videos. She loves to shop and she loves to decorate. So if you like both of those things, you are gonna love Bella and all of the things that she does on her channel. So make sure you go check her out. Like I said, I'm gonna leave the link in the description box below. This is the second video in my holiday entertaining series. I've already done a vertical pear salad. Guys, it is beautiful and it's delicious and I can't even tell you how easy it is to make. So I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description box below. It would work perfectly for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And I'm also going to have more videos on holiday entertaining coming up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you won't miss any of those videos. My first tip is to keep it simple. You don't have to have an elaborate table for it to be beautiful. And when you're entertaining, you wanna make sure that you have time for all the other things like your food prep and things that will really make an impact. So when it comes to the table, keep it as simple as possible. My second tip is to choose a color scheme that works with your decor. So this is gonna help keep everything cohesive and then it's also gonna allow you to be able to use things that you might already have. Since I was using greens and oranges in the rest of my decor, I decided to keep with that theme in the dining room as well. Tip number three is to keep the centerpiece low. For entertaining, you wanna make sure that everybody can see each other. So by keeping the centerpiece low, you're allowing for better conversation during the dinner. And that's what we really want is for all of our guests to be able to enjoy each other's company. By using one large pumpkin in the center and then just a few smaller velvet pumpkins and my little Dollar Tree pumpkins on the ends, I'm making a nice centerpiece that has impact, but it's also not gonna be in anyone's way. My next tip is to incorporate some non-seasonal elements into your tablescape. So you could do this by the table runner or tablecloth that you use. I chose to do this by bringing in some vases that I'm actually gonna use as candle holders. I love these because I did wanna bring in some height to the table, so they allowed me to do that. I added a few coffee beans to the bottom of the vases to give a little more color and also to provide a base for my candles. And then I'm just using some white Dollar Tree candles which look nice in these amber color vases. This allowed me to bring in some height to the table but are still going to be easy to move if I needed to move them out of the way for people to be able to have conversation. Tip number five is to add interest to the table by using contrast. So I did this in a couple of ways. One with my table runner making sure that I had a lighter table runner than my table since my table is so dark. Also using the white distress chargers since I'm using the darker colors for my placemat and my plates. And then the other white elements that I'm bringing in through the candles and the white velvet pumpkins are also adding contrast to the richer greens and oranges that I'm using. Tip number six is to make a statement with your napkins. There's lots of different ways you can do this. I chose to do it by using napkins that are mixed match, yet they coordinate with my table runner. And they were both from Bed Bath & Beyond. They were meant to coordinate together, but I do like the way the playfulness of having the mixed match colors 
works and again adds a lot of interest to the tablescape. If you just want to use plain white napkins, you can add interest by creating a special napkin fold. You can find lots of napkin folding on YouTube. In fact, I have a video with how to fold elegant napkins and I will link that in the description box below in case you're interested. Or you could use napkins that have some type of pattern. So lots of different ways you can do it with napkins. The ones I'm using has a beautiful lace detail that adds another touch to the table. And if your napkins don't make a statement by themselves, then you can always add a napkin ring that does make a statement. My next tip is to keep things easy to move around. That way, if you do need to move something out of the way, such as the candle holders, so that people can have better sight lines for conversation, then it's very simple to do. So I added these two maple leaf plates at the end of my tables. I think they add a nice decorative touch to the tablescape, but then I can also use them for bread, for serving on the table, and I could easily switch these out with the candle holders and put the candle holders on the end and then move the plates to where the candle holders were with the bread. And so that way everybody has easy access to the bread and nice sight lines, but we can still enjoy the candlelight. Tip number eight is to put together a drink station so your guests can feel at home when they arrive. This can be as simple as putting some beautiful stemware on a tray and then having a cocktail ready for your guests to pour. Thrift stores are a great place to find affordable drinkware that is also beautiful. I found these unique and beautiful glasses at the thrift store for a great price. When I'm entertaining, I love to have some type of signature cocktail for my guests to try. And sometimes I like it to be something fun and maybe a little bit different that they've never tried before. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. This is a recipe for an apple cider shrub cocktail. And a shrub might be something your guests have not had before. And this is not a true shrub because we're gonna cheat a little bit and just use apple cider vinegar and we're not gonna let it sit. Typically in a shrub, you'd mix some type of vinegar with fruit and sugar and let it sit for a while. So we're taking a shortcut, but it's still gonna taste nice and refreshing and delicious. Let's go ahead and get to the recipe. For the cocktail, we're starting by adding four ounces of apple cider to a cocktail shaker. Next, I'm adding about one ounce of apple cider vinegar. And then I'm adding about an ounce of maple syrup. Now for the maple syrup, you might want to adjust this according to taste. So the sweetness will somewhat depend on how sweet your apple cider was. Then we're just adding some ice to our shaker and giving it a good shake. After you've shaken it well so that it's all mixed together and nice and cold, we're just gonna add it to our glass. Next, I'm adding about three to four ounces of sparkling cider, and I'm just eyeballing this. You can add um, about halfway to the top, and then we'll end up topping it off with some Prosecco. Now, the Prosecco is optional. If you wanted to, you could use sparkling water instead and make it a mocktail, but the alcohol comes in with the Prosecco. To finish it off, I'm slicing some apple for the garnish. Mine ended up being a little bit thicker than I would have liked. You wanna try to slice it as thinly as possible. Once I slice it, I like to go over it and rub it with a little bit of lemon, and that way it'll help it to keep from browning. And if you wanted to, you could squeeze a little bit of the lemon into the cocktail. I didn't, but it actually would give it a nice little flavor. Finally, I'm taking a sprig of rosemary, and then I'm just poking it into the apple to hold it in place, and then placing it in the glass. So the garnish is gonna be the rosemary and the apple, and the rosemary will actually give it a nice little flavor as well. Just know that you can play around with this recipe a little bit and change the proportions of the apple cider vinegar and the sugar if necessary to suit your taste. All right guys, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I put together my no fuss Thanksgiving tablescape and my apple cider cocktail. I'm gonna have more drink recipes for you coming up. So that brings me to my question that I have for you. Do you like to have a signature cocktail when you entertain? Let us know in the comments below if you do what it is 
so we can all get some ideas. Remember to go check out Bella's channel and see what she did for her tablescape and cocktail idea. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. Hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any of my holiday entertaining videos or my Christmas decorating videos that are gonna be coming up. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.